What? Seattle, a godforsaken hellscape that shouldn't exist. It's riddled. Wait, no, 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 we're back. Seattle, a godforsaken hellscape that shouldn't exist. It's riddled with drugs, crime, violence, oh. and worst of all, hipsters. A city where the only thing more common than Starbucks is HIV. In Seattle, it's considered a good day if you only get stabbed once on your way home from work. In short, the place is a sh Is it only one day? But once upon a time, there was a man that had a vision for a better Seattle. A man who was a beacon of hope in the darkest of times. I remember this guy. I remember this guy when the sun sets on walking Seattle, around as a vigilante in this outfit, dark night known as literally fighting Jones. crime. Phoenix Jones calls himself Phoenix Jones. Fighter. He's the man who dresses up and patrols the streets at night. My name is Phoenix Jones, and I'm the leader of the Seattle superhero movement. We walk around a lot of the really rough areas of Seattle and just keep our eyes out for crime and just are the first responders on the scene. They patrol the not so mean streets of Seattle. Allegedly, the not so mean streets. <laughs> Stay back. Phoenix okay. Jones. Yeah, that's what he's called himself. Phoenix but look, Jones. Look how he dressed. And cosplay dork. Before he became a hero, <laughs> Phoenix Jones was just a regular schmuck named Ben. And he was just like me and you. He went to work, took care of his kids, paid his taxes. <laughs> just a dude living a normal life in Seattle. Well, as normal as anyone can live in Seattle anyways. But one day that would all change when Ben took his son to the mall for some back to school shopping. When he finally got back to his car, the front window was broken and there was glass everywhere. Turns out some scumbag put a rock in a ski mask, smashed the window, and took everything inside. Then his That's son crazy. fell in the broken glass and cut himself up so bad that he needed stitches. And as if that wasn't bad. That is one of the most annoying things. Like, like coming outside and seeing that you're, first of all, coming outside and seeing that your car is messed up. Um, that's happened to me uh, a few times. Like once was somebody had an accident, right? It was two other cars that had an accident at the intersection and they slammed into my car and pushed into a tree. Uh, I came out to go to work in that morning and there was a basically a note on my car and, uh, you know, that was contacted or whatever. And I had to call my insurance company and uh, report it and all that kind of stuff. And uh, my car was totaled. Uh, uh, no, no fault of mine, uh, and no malicious intent toward me, but it just so happened that they decided to have a, they got in a car accident at the corner and crushed my car. Uh, I end up getting a new car. I have this car I have now, uh, it's doing okay. And, uh, that car has been broken into, they, they broke my windows one day along with a bunch of other windows on that side of the street. Uh, they didn't necessarily take anything. I think they were just busting people's windows out. It was kind of stupid. Like, and it was just like, come on, man. But if we had Phoenix Jones, maybe that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> had enough. He got 12 parking tickets while he was gone. And Ben was pissed off. 12 parking tickets? But what made it even worse was that several witnesses saw the robbery and did nothing about it. They just watched and let it happen. Of course. What are they supposed to do? You know that most people who live there are completely desensitized to crime. They've seen so much of it. It's like part of their daily routine, like exercising or paying $5 for a cup of diarrhea water from Starbucks. Most people Ew. aren't going to get involved when they see something going. First of all, no one, no one should get involved. I would not want anyone to get involved with someone trying to break into my car because they could be hurt. Like, they could be hurt. Like, who knows what this person is capable of that is breaking into people's cars. I wouldn't want anybody to, like, run up to them and try to, like, stop them, especially if they already broke my window. Like, what do you, unless the, unless the person that's trying to stop them had a gun, it's like, or what, they're going to, they're going to call 911? Yeah, they're going to call 911, and then they're, the person will have escaped with all the stuff anyway, and then, like, I'm out there, now I'm talking to the cops, which I could have called them myself. Like, it's just, like, no one wants to get in a, in a situation like that with anyone anyway. Like, it's, it's, it's too much to ask of someone that doesn't know you. These days, we're more likely to record a crime than to try and stop it. And I guess it kind of makes sense. There's a certain logic to not messing around with dangerous looking characters. But still, you can understand why Ben was upset. His kid had to get stitches, the car needed repairs, and these mother suckers just sat there and watched it all happen. He wanted to do something about it. 
police told me that there was nothing they could really do and there was no way to investigate it and the insurance wouldn't cover it because I didn't have a police report and it was it was all this stuff and it just piled up and finally I said if they're not going to do something I'm going to and I went back to that parking lot and I sat there and I waited for the guy and I eventually I caught him and I chased him into the woods and I, I basically gave him a very firm talking to about why you don't break into other people's I cars. gave him a very Three firm later, talking was to. was downtown having a drink when he sees one of his buddies getting beat up outside of a bar. This time, he wasn't just going to sit around and let it happen. He still had the ski mask from the carjacking in his car, so he put it on and chased his friend's attacker until the police arrived. This is where Phoenix Jones, Seattle's very own superhero, was born. He's not a superhero. He's there was too much crime in the city. You can't be a superhero with no superpowers. Don't call him a superhero. He's definitely not a superhero. There were 50 people. Same way Batman is not a superhero. Doing nothing. Ben decided he wasn't going to be one of those schlemiels sitting on the sidelines watching innocent people get attacked. He was going to clean up this city. The only problem is he couldn't just run around with a ski mask or people might mistake him for a criminal. <laughs> so like every good superhero, he decided he needed a dope-ass outfit. But he wasn't going to settle on some cheap-ass Party City costume. No, our boy Phoenix Jones wanted his very own bat suit. And after paying a visit to his local custom superhero outfit store, he found the perfect <laughs> one. Complete his custom with a bulletproof vest, outfit. stab plating, and shock-absorbing foam. The costume came with a price tag of $10,000. God but damn. Hey, it was worth it because it looked what what do you do what do you do for a living that you have ten thousand dollars to spend on a costume like this what do you do you could have just spent ten thousand you could have spent money to get bulletproof glass put into your car <laughs> shatterproof bulletproof glass put in your car that, that would have been better that would have been safer <laughs> safer cool as shit the only thing that was missing was a cape which let's be honest would be incredibly impractical in an actual fight you could stumble on it like a like an enemy could pull on it it would be a nightmare but what it did come with was toys and i'm not talking about the kind me and your mom use in the bedroom i'm talking about <laughs> crime fighting toys stun baton pepper spray tear gas handcuffs you know <laughs> the basic stuff an up-and-coming crime fighter needs in his utility belt. At one point, he even had a $10,000 riot shield that could take a shotgun blast. So not only did he have a $10,000 costume, he had a $10,000 riot shield to go with it. Stop. Stop. You spent $20,000. What do you do for a living? And... This is probably why he was selling crack. <laughs> he ran out of money buying a bunch of superhero stuff. Point blank range. Once Mr. Jones had all the equipment he needed, buying he a bunch of bat gadgets, prowling the streets of Seattle looking for crimes to stop. It didn't take long. He did everything from keeping drunk people from driving, stopping carjackings, breaking up fights, and stopping criminals from fleeing crime scenes until the police showed up. He even stopped the guy from stealing a bus. And he didn't just dish out ass kickings all day long. He was serious about helping people. So he would feed the homeless, he would help elderly people cross the street, get cats out of trees. The man was basically a grown ass boy scout. Dog. You you have a you have a you have a son. You can't be running around at night putting your life in danger i'm sorry like this is not there's no there's no there's no um plot armor in the real world there's no ex machinas there's no like other people to swoop in just as you're about to be killed to save your life you can't you can't be doing that out, and his good deeds didn't go unnoticed. Phoenix Jones was gaining a reputation in Seattle. He was kind of a cult hero, and the local news started following him around everywhere. I mean, who could blame him? There was a fucking superhero running around. That's not something you see every day. So our boy PJ decided to use the attention to his advantage. If more people knew about what he was doing, it might inspire others to get out there and fight crime themselves. No. Plus, the criminals would think twice about getting involved in some tomfoolery if there was a mass vigilante running around. No, they... So they would try to shoot you. 
because they would feel like they had the go ahead to do so. Because if you want to be kick ass, I don't know if he watched the movie. He would kick ass went through some shit. But that was a movie. So he started uploading his exploits to his YouTube channel, The Phoenix Jones, in full 120p glory. I mean, God 120p. Damn, bro, this shit looks like it was filmed on a pool noodle. <laughs> Despite looking grainier than a bowl of rice, the channel instantly took off. People ate this shit up. And a lot of people were inspired to go out and be Phoenix Jones. They go out to and their risk their lives. Crime. So Jones he, he should have definitely had the the thing on the screen to say, "Do not try this at home or out on the streets. Don't do it." Decided to start up his very own super group, like a real life Avengers or Justice League, but. Shittier. They called themselves the <laughs> Rain City Superhero Movement. Members included Shockwave, Buster, Green Reaper, The Mantis, Karma, Skyman, and El Caballero. And Phoenix Jones. El Caballero. Wife, Soon Phoenix went from being a local hero to a mainstream icon. He was even doing interviews with Fox News. Why? Why do you wear the costume? Why do you do this as a superhero? Um, I think you have to draw attention to the fact that crime's not okay, and that uh, there's people running around who are just out of control. And the only way to really to draw, well, the only way I can think of to draw attention to the fact and not look like I was going to do something bad, you know, with like a ski mask and all bulletproof gear, I took an image that meant something to me. I took the image of a superhero and uh, made it my own. And Dr. Drew. I went out and went and fought crime the day before our first date. And I was, I was planning on taking the night off, but I did it anyway. And I ended up getting stabbed. And we have a date the next day. And I can't go to the hospital and I can't, you know, reveal my secret identity. So I thought to myself, what do I do? I'll just glue it. Fifteen <laughs> minutes in, I'm like, listen, I'm bleeding profusely. I think he took it a little too far. I think the people are not real like he took it a little too far. You got stabbed. Okay, it's time to stop. It's time to stop. Usually for my abdomen. I got stabbed the other day, dressed up like a superhero. He was not exaggerating in that clip. This guy was not messing around. He was actually putting his life on the line every single night while prowling the streets. Phoenix was stabbed, shot at, beaten up, had broken bones, and often came home bruised and battered. I've broken three ribs, I've had my nose broken, I've been shot twice, I've been stabbed Bro, two times. Bro, it's I've been time to stop. Um, I've been in probably maybe 40 or so street fights. And your body can only handle so much punishment. <laughs> That's like the best Injuries reaction. Was to pile up, but Phoenix powered on. Putting on a costume and fighting criminals all day long sounds pretty fun, but... In all honesty, it's a miracle that this dude's still alive. Yeah. And pretty soon, injuries would be the least of his problems. Because he was starting to get on Seattle PD's bad side. Police typically aren't too fond of other people <laughs> doing their jobs for them. And the fact that Phoenix Jones was getting a ton of great publicity, something the police rarely get, probably built up a lot of resentment. Because at the end of the day, even though Phoenix and his friends were doing a lot of good, in the eyes of the law, they were nothing but glorified vigilantes. I mean, yes, the, the same way they treated them in the comic books. It's not something that we sanction as a department. It's not something that we uh, authorize in any way, shape, or form. And Seattle's a very unique city. What I'd say to Phoenix Jones is, hey, you're doing a pretty good thing. You okay, brother? But there is a line. Don't cross it. But despite the fact that Seattle PD was breathing down their necks, the Rain City superheroes were mostly able to avoid legal consequences. These people were not dumb. They knew what they had to do to stay out of hot water. Number one, they never threw the first punch. If Phoenix Jones saw somebody getting beat up, he would step in between them and try to break up the fight, but he would never touch the attacker unless they hit him first. After that, it was open season. He could pepper spray them, <laughs> use a stun gun, or just a swift kick to the dick. Anything goes at that point. Number two is he always had a GoPro on him at all times. So if there was ever any doubt about his methods, he had receipts. Number three is the simple fact that violent criminals typically aren't going to go whining to the police. I mean, what are they going to say? Oh, uh, yes, officer. It was that man over there in the Franklin the Turtle costume that beat me up when I was in the middle of breaking into that car. Oh, by the way, I'm on drugs. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> and number four is a little something called mutual, mutual combat. combat. What 
is mutual combat, you might be asking? And can I use it on my boss? Well, it's a law that essentially makes street fighting legal as long as both parties agree and there's a police officer present to basically referee and make sure nobody gets killed. Really? Washington Are you kidding me? Where mutual combat is allowed. But even though he did everything in his power to keep his crime fighting kosher, he couldn't stay out of trouble. If there's a cop there to referee... Yeah, I'll play. I'll play Rainbow Six after this. But I actually Sunday, I want to get something 9th, to eat first. Jones was I am like deathly hungry. After pepper spray, I ate like a pretzel before I started streaming. Phoenix and I was tried like, to break it. up what he thought was a fight between two parties. Both parties then turned. I need to make like I need to make some noodles or something before I play. Scene, Jones was the one that was charged with assault. Nobody else. The police said that Phoenix and his gang of do-gooders had been warned as they were using pepper spray more and more frequently. Specifically, Phoenix had been told to call 911 and not inject himself into these types of situations. So the police were a little bit ticked off and they arrested him and took away his suit and mask. It just so happened that Phoenix didn't have his GoPro on him that night. But luckily, a film crew was in the middle of making a documentary and they caught the whole thing on camera. The filmmakers said that the police didn't even want to take their statements. They just arrested him right away. When the police arrived, they didn't even ask for my, my own statement. They kind of just dismissed us maybe i'll watch that i'll watch that video that the, 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 the 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 score esports video about him after this and after, I get, after i make something eat. things got out of hand and both parties turned on him Stephanie says the crowd jones thought he was helping turned on him what's up what's up what's up what's up, what's up? and it's jones's use of pepper spray that police say led to his arrest for assault either way he had to appear in court and i shit you not he showed up in full costume after reviewing the evidence the judge decided to drop the charges and our boy phoenix jones was feeling himself first thing he did was walk out of that courtroom and go talk to a bunch of reporters and why doesn't he ever next, tuck in the mask shock you um I'm Phoenix Jones. Turns out that Phoenix Jones was none other than Benjamin Fodor, a professional MMA fighter. Suddenly, the okay, MMA he was kicking was making a lot of sense. This man was a trained martial artist fighting regular ass Joe Schmoes. After the whole unmasking, Phoenix was at the peak of his career. He could have just retired from crime fighting and he would have gone down in history as an absolute legend. But it's like they say you either die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. As you can imagine, Phoenix's the fall relationship of Phoenix with Jones. the police kind of soured after the whole pepper spray incident. It wasn't the best relationship to begin with, but now it was even worse. Phoenix, he just wanted to help the boys in blue and gain their respect. But they saw him as a nuisance who was doing more harm than good. And it wasn't even just the police. It was like the officials of the city of Seattle. One city attorney said, Mr. Fodor is no hero, just a deeply misguided individual. He has been warned that his actions put himself in danger. And the latest episode demonstrates that innocent bystanders can also be harmed. And the more famous Phoenix Jones got, the bigger his ego grew. And the more he started butting heads with cops and officials. Police worry Phoenix's recent taste of fame pushes him to put himself in harm's way. Don't insert yourself into those situations. Uh, if you see something, call 911. On June 30th, 2013, he would post a video titled Phoenix Jones Lava Lounge Assault Edited Version with this description. I believe this video shows the Seattle Police Department letting a criminal go for no reason at all. Tonight was an extremely disappointing display of incompetence by the Seattle Police Department. I am going to file a formal complaint as well as release my video to the police and media for accountability purposes. It is the job of the police to arrest and investigate suspected criminals. Your feelings about my protective outfit and your politics should not impair your legal obligation to the people. The video shows Jones following a man who allegedly assaulted a bartender that refused to so serve. So he's far following the guy? The police show up and just let the guy go. Barely even question him. Despite all his problems with the police, Ben Fodor still had the people. They didn't have any side. any evidence. He was doing a bunch of TV appearances. He had a documentary made about him, and he even had his own comic book. But public perception would slowly start to turn against him too. People were starting to question if he was really doing this to help the public or if it was just for his own ego. The first major backlash he would face was when he posted a video depicting the murder of Nicole Westbrook. One night, Nicole what? was walking out of a bar when she got caught in a crossfire of a drive-by shooting. Jones heard the shots from a couple blocks away and he rushed to the scene as fast as he could. Sadly, she didn't make it. The scene was later featured in the Phoenix Jones comic book 
which many people saw as him profiting off her death. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. In another video, Phoenix was fighting some guy in the middle of the street. I know it might be hard to tell from the footage because it was filmed on a fucking Nokia 5160, <laughs> but uh, surprisingly, the MMA fighter wins the fight against all odds. Yo, Washington's a mutual combat state. If you'd like to agree to fight, we can do that if you'd like to. Mutual combat. With about four leg kicks and one right hand. I set him Dang. straight down on the sidewalk and then I called an ambulance to make sure he was okay. Suspect is down. Mutual combat is over. This video was a really bad look for Jones. Here was a a mutual combat state. Full body armor. You want to fight me? That's three white claws away from calling his ex. And the sad truth was a lot of these so-called criminals Jones was going up against were just like this guy. And this was kind of like the turning point for his reputation. Even his fellow superheroes were turning on him. Rain City superhero member Shockwave made a lengthy Facebook post detailing name Shockwave. Hot's Ben photo was behind. Did he play his did he play his radio really loud? He's in front of bars and alleys behind bars. Phoenix Jones preys on people who are drunk and unable to function normally because they are impaired by alcohol. These are normal citizens out to have fun, get drunk, and maybe make a few poor decisions, but are generally good people. From time to time, Phoenix Jones picks a fight with maybe an actual criminal. But mostly, it's just impaired people. Case in point, the Phoenix Jones mutual combat video. Clearly, the guy and his friends are impaired by alcohol when Phoenix decides to take them on in a fight. Clearly not a fair fight. Would MMA allow one fighter to be drunk while the other is sober? South Seattle has true crime, like on Rainer Avenue and Martin Luther King Jr. Way. But you won't find Phoenix Jones down there fighting. You're like, oh, I'll, I'll fight you. That I'll, just I can beat you. You're just a dude in a suit. And then he's the asshole. <laughs> and this post came just one day after Jones officially disbanded the Rain City superhero movement. I love being a superhero, and I believe there's a certain level of professionalism that goes with that. I just can't in good conscience continue to put my seal of approval on people I feel are not loyal or properly trained. And if that wasn't bad enough, his wife left him too. Purple God. Rain, aka Ben Fodor's wife, announced on November 13th, 2013. Oh, she was a superhero we too. Together. Bro was really going superhero. through it. He lost his friends, his wife, and his reputation all in the span of a year. After the disbanding of the RCSM, Phoenix went off on his own. He was still patrolling the streets of Seattle because that's the only life he knew. But now he had to be a lot more careful to avoid scrutiny. So for the most part, he stayed out of the headlines. That is until January of 2020 when Ben Fodor was arrested after him and his girlfriend allegedly tried to sell drugs to an undercover cop, which is what? absolutely wild. That's like finding out Batman was secretly a serial killer the whole time. It's like they say. <laughs> You either die a hero or live long enough to become a... Oh, wait. I already... Why was he... It was around that same time that Phoenix officially announced that he was hanging up his cape, so to speak. At the age of 29, Benjamin Fodor finally retired his alter ego, Phoenix Jones. Or so we thought. Because in 2020, he was seen walking around the Capitol Hill occupied zone. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't click don't that link. don't remember, it was this block in downtown Seattle yeah, that was taken over by Black even. Lives Matter protesters. Since Delete then, that message. No throw it in the trash. documented sightings of him. But according to legend, even today, on a cold, dark Seattle night, you might catch a glimpse of him out there in the streets, pepper spraying tough guys <laughs> and punching hooligans in the head. I personally hope he keeps it up for as long as possible, because he may not be the hero we need, but he sure as shit is the one we deserve. Guys, I have something to admit. This isn't easy, but uh, I gotta, I gotta come out and say it. I'm kind of a schlemiel, okay? I'm constantly losing things. Just this morning, I lost my wallet. And then I lost my keys. And then I lost right, what's my your ad dignity, for? self respect, and sanity. And it's not even 3 p.m. What's your, Luckily, what's I your ad about? Exeter, who makes these really cool wallets that are like half the size of a regular wallet. Does it have a, I mean, a locator look at this in it? This monstrosity. Does it have a Bluetooth that I've been locator? Around in, it? in my back pocket for the last few months. And now look at this. Please tell me Did it has a Bluetooth you know locator in it. That having a large wallet in your back pocket can cause a condition known as wallet neuritis. No, I, I did not make that up. I'm serious. This is a real condition. <laughs> Even though these wallets are small, they can carry up to 12 cords and cash if you're into that. And check this out. Pretty cool, huh? It also has a solar powered tracker that'll help you find yeah. your wallet when you inevitably lose it. This thing is the size of a credit card, so it won't take up too much space. And you don't have to charge it. The sun charges it for you. Just two hours in the sun is equal to three months of charge. Nah, oh, of really? That, that built-in RFID 
to block people who's trying to steal your data. I might actually want one of these wallets, shit. bro. So if you want a cool ass wallet like your Uncle Danny, use code Dantavius for up to 25% off your next order on extra.com. Again, that's code Dantavius for 25% off. Or use the link at shop.exta.com slash Dantavius. Thank you so much to Exta That's for definitely a cool wallet. Video. And thank you to the patrons who subsidize my lifestyle. Good video, good video. Give it a like. All right. Um, 